Hi kindergartners, um, I am going to share a read aloud with you. I know you have all been doing research on an animal that you're interested in and finding out more about how it survives. Um, so I picked an animal that I thought was super cool. Um, I learned about it when I was watching a show actually on um, Netflix. It was called like Animals at Night or Earth at Night or something like that. Um, and they're called a long tongue Mexican bat, um, but they also live in the United States and in, in Arizona in the Sonoran Desert. Um, so I'm going to share that book with you really quick, though. Um, our learning target, or what I want you to think about um, what, while I'm reading today, um, is I can find out details about what an animal needs to survive. Um, and then I drew like a magnifying glass looking at a book, finding out more. And there's the bat that I'm going to be reading about. And it's all about the habitat the bat lives into because those are important factors, like the environmental things that the bat needs to survive. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with that book. And you can think about um, what, what questions you might have or what you learned um, or what questions you might have about your animal thinking about what I share. Okay, I'm gonna get started because it's kind of a long book. This book is called The Cactus Cafe, A Story of the Sonoran Desert. Not a drop of rain has fallen for months. The afternoon sun hammers the dry soil making the air above it shimmer. On a rocky hillside, the saguaro cactuses stand like soldiers with their arms upraised. One great saguaro towers above the others, higher than a two-story house. This giant has been growing for almost 200 years. It is nearly summer in the Sonoran Desert of southern Arizona. Most animals are huddled in their nests, hiding from the relentless sun. A pair of Gila woodpeckers has pecked out a hollow in one of the great saguaro's arms. Snuggled safely inside, their newly hatched babies peep for food. Early this morning, the father pried two beetles out of the branch of a nearly Palo Verde tree for them. But still, they chirp for more. He stands in his doorway and pants in the heat. The babies will have to wait until the sun is lower. Out on the horizon, mountains rise purple against the dazzling blue sky. There in the cool shelter of a cave sleeps a flock of long-nosed bats. Tuck in a nest woven between the trunk and two prickly arms of the giant saguaro, a great horned owl and her chicks sleep, too. Like the bats and most other desert animals, the owls sleep by day and searches for food by night. But in the drought, food has become scarce, water is nowhere. Many plants have dried up. Some of the smaller animals that eat the plants have become weak and sickly. They are waiting, waiting for the saguaros to bear their juicy red fruit. As night comes, the full moon cools the desert with its silvery light and the saguaros begin to open their brilliant white flowers to the stars. In the cave, the bats stretch their wings. They fly out over the dark land. The sparse yellow leaves of creosote bushes glisten in the moonlight below. Just to the north, the bone-dry bean fields of the native Tohono O'odham, the desert people, lie empty. There is nothing to eat or drink for miles. Then the delicious scent of the saguaro blossoms lures the bats. The flowers must be pollinated or there will be no fruit, and the bats are expert pollinators. In return for their services, each flower promises them a sip of sweet nectar. The bats spot the giant saguaro first. As they glide closer, their sensitive ears pick up a faint rustle. The great horned owl is also awake and on the prowl. The bats are nervous, and they veer off toward a small saguaro, a 60-year-old flowering this year for the first time. Near the base of the giant, a kangaroo rat eases out of his underground home, hoping to find an old Palo Verde seed to eat. Nearby, a kit fox slinks between the burr sage bushes. 
listening, a rat-sized meal would help fill the, out the fox's bony ribs. But the owl has the same idea. The kit fox cowers as the owl swoops. The frightened kangaroo rat leaps once, twice, and ducks back into his burrow. The owl perches atop the giant saguaro and waits. Perhaps hunger will drive the kangaroo rat out of his home again, but the kangaroo rat's burrow has many doors. He follows a long tunnel underground and slips out the back unnoticed. Finally, the owl sees a small gopher snake winding over the soil. The owl dives and hooks it into her talons. She carries the wriggling serpent to her nest while she struggles to feed bits of snake to her babies. The bats return, feeling safer now than the owl is busy. The bats circle the giant, then, like hummingbirds, they hover over the blossoms. They push their long noses inside and lap up the nectar with their long tongues. They are polite, taking turns, one to a flower. Pollen powders the bats' heads and shoulders as they drink nectar from the blossoms. They deliver grains of pollen from one flower to the next, Hidden inside each saguaro flower, tiny pouches called ovules wait to receive the pollen. The bats drink until their bellies stick out, round as ping pong balls. Stuffed, they hang by their toes from the branches of the palo verde tree. They comb their fur with their toe claws and eat the leftover pollen. As the bats lick their wings clean for the night, a noisy group of javelinas snuffles around the giant saguaro, nipping off cactus seedlings and munching them down, spines and all. In the distance, a hungry coyote yodels. The javelinas lift their heads and listen. Another coyote song echoes the first. The javelinas trot to safety under a clump of ironwood trees. The bats go on licking their wings, untroubled, up out of the coyote's reach. Their only enemy now is the sun, and before it rises, they retreat to their mountain cave. Then, as the bats hang from their cave, walls, and drows, as snakes and kangaroo rats, owls, and javelinas return to their shady homes for the day, the saguaro flowers start to close. Deep inside the flowers, the minute pollen grains inch down tiny tubes toward the ovules, where a grain of pollen from one flower unites with the ovule of another and a saguaro seed forms. Around the seeds, the green oval fruits begin to grow. In a few weeks, ruby red jewels crown the great cactus and those around it. The saguaro fruits have ripened. At last, the time has come to feast. The Gila woodpeckers tear off pieces of juicy red fruit and return triumphantly to their hungry chicks. White-winged doves and curve-billed thrashers perch on the saguaro arms and dip their beaks into the moist, melony fruit. In the shade of the giant, a Tahono Odom family sets up camp. For many days, they share in the harvest, using long saguaro rib poles to reach the tops of the highest cactuses. As night falls, wood rats, pocket mice, and javelinas wander far from their homes, dining on the fruit that has fallen. Owls, kit foxes, and coyotes stalk them silently, enjoying better hunting, and the saguaro fruit for dessert. While the animals savor their long-awaited feast, the bats return to circle the giant saguaros. They dip down and taste the fruit briefly, but now the stiletto-leafed aguave bushes lure them away. The agave stalks have shot up high and are covered with white blossoms. The bats dive for agave nectar. Their work of pollinating the majestic saguaros is done. The desert is alive and bursting with sweet red fruit. And then this points to where the Sonoran Desert is. It says long-nosed bats can be found in the Sonoran Desert in southern Arizona. On average, the Sonoran Desert gets less than six inches of rain a year. In the summer, temperatures can be over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, thank you for listening. Um, so, Miss Schroeder and Miss Fletcher sent me a graphic organizer to help you plan 
um, and organize your research you found. Um, so I um, started my own research for um, the long-nosed bats. I think I called them long ton bats earlier, so sorry, they're long-nosed bats. Um, and it, so, so it starts with all about bats. Um, and then for their appearance, I put brown, small, they have wings, they have a long tongue, not pointy nose. They live in the Sonoran Desert. That's their habitat. They lived in a cave is what it said in the book. So that's part of their habitat. Um, didn't talk about family a lot, but it did say there was a large group of them. So they live in a large group. Um, and their diet was they ate nectar from the saguaro cactus. And then it also at the end said they ate nectar from agave trees too. So agave nectar. Um, and one fun fact that I liked about this book was that, um, they go out during the night and full moons. So they needed the light from the full moon, um, to get to those flowers. And sometimes those flowers only open when it's a full moon to, to pollinate them. So I thought also another fun fact was that they're pollinators. So they are really, really important to go po pollinate the flowers so the flowers make fruit. Um, and I thought it was cool that the long-nosed bats had such an important role in the desert. Okay, so I want you to think about what questions you might have um, or more things you could find out about your animal, what it does to survive. Um, and look for in your research from hearing about um, my thinking and research about the long-nosed bat. Okay, thanks.